all central banks are facing the same problem. And it's a problem of their own creation. And it's, I will argue, an intentional act, not an unintentional act, because governments, as they consolidate power, spend. Why do they do that? Well, because it's profitable for them and their cronies. And, you know, I I was amazed. I actually was amazed by this, that I think it was Mitch McConnell actually said on television, don't worry about all this money that's going to Ukraine. It's it's not going to, to the Ukrainians. It's going to us. It's going to our companies. The United States stock market was down on Wednesday as investors tried to digest the unexpected news of the sudden downgrade of the United States' sovereign credit rating from AAA to AA+. Treasury yields also ticked up as the dollar gained after the release of private payroll data that pointed to the U.S. labor market resilience. Fitch, one of the three credit rating agencies, dropped the U.S. sovereign credit rating from AAA to AA+, becoming the second major rating agency after Standards & Poor's to do so. Fitch cited fiscal deterioration as the reason for the downgrade. Eric Winograd, the chief economist at Alliance Bernstein in New York, said the market has not shown any significant reaction to the news of the downgrade, suggesting that all is well. Reuters quotes Winograd as saying, Look, no one is seriously considering the prospect that the U.S. would ever fail to make a payment on its debt. There will continue to be demand for both long-term and short-term treasuries and don't see this downgrade as a significant signal of any trouble ahead. According to Mark Yusko, renowned hedge fund manager and founder of Morgan Creek Capital Investments, The downgrade might not cause immediate panic, but is another ominous sign of what's coming for the United States economy. During the latest episode of his weekly roundup series with Blockworks Macro, the hedge fund manager discusses the precarious state of the United States economy and how important it is to invest in Bitcoin. According to Yusko, the United States might not be there yet, but it is gradually heading in the same direction as Japan, which is officially reported as having a debt-to-GDP ratio of 264% by the IMF, We will now bring you clips from Mark Yusko's interview. But before we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notifications bell for more videos like this. Also, ensure you drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Everything you do helps with the YouTube algorithm and immensely contributes to the channel's growth. Thanks and enjoy the video. Probably way back when in, in history there may have been something, but but no, it's 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 not normally seen as as a an option. Therefore, the idea of downgrading from AAA to AA kind of seems odd. On the other hand, basic supply and demand, right? The, the price of those bonds is falling because there's excess supply and limited demand. And if that trend continues, which it appears that it's going to at, at the rate that our, our government keeps spending, I I think it's not a it's not a full on panic yet, Mike. Yeah. But but it it could turn into one, and panics can get ugly in a hurry. Here's a couple things that are happening in Japan. I'm glad you bring Japan up. So if I asked listeners, what's the best performing global market this year? Mm. Most people would say the United States, right? Yeah. Um, very few would say, well, wait a minute, Europe's outperforming the U.S. And, and actually Japan is outperforming both of those. And then emerging markets are, are a distant, distant fourth. Um, you know, Japan is stocks have been in fuego. I mean, completely in fuego. And part of that's because their return on invested capital has been the same as U.S. companies. Now, their ROE has been much lower because they're not very capital efficient. They keep too much cash on the balance sheet. They don't do M&A. They don't do restructuring. They let bad businesses kind of just go on. Sounds like what we were doing there for a while. And, um, and so the only way out for Japan for years has been to weaken their currency. And, you know, if you ask, again, the average person, you know, how's, how's the yen doing this year? Um, I think people would say, oh, I, I, I don't know. It's probably flat. No, it's down 9%. And that linkage between devaluing their currency and appreciating stock market has been 
really strong for Japan. And part and parcel of that was that Japanese rates, particularly the the ten year rate, was was kind of capped. There was something called yield curve control, and it was managed by this guy Hiroka Kurodasan, and he retired. And Crazy Kurodasan is gone. They got this new guy, and he said that he was going to give up this this yield curve control. And now. It looks like a bigger move than it is, but on a percentage basis, it is a gigantic move up in rates. And the real problem is as bad as the U.S. government budget deficit is, meaning interest on U.S. government debt now is bumping up against the highest level it has ever been. Okay. Now, you think about that. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? Well, we, we can't not pay the interest. Right, or then we we default, which is what Fitch and, and others are, are you know making subtle noises about. Well, we can't afford to pay the interest if rates, if we issued all the bonds at zero, and now rates are five on their way maybe to six. How do we pay that interest? Well, this is what Japan has faced, and and for years their rates just stayed at zero. They they just kept them at zero. And Kyle Bass for years would scream about how these guys had to default and there was no way yeah. they could balance the budget. And they hit 100% debt to GDP, GDP, then 150%, then 200%. And now they're at 225%, 226 or something like that. That's unfathomable for where we are in the US. It's just over 100. But, but probably prophetic, probably, probably the way we're headed. Japan is currently in the middle of a long monetary easing cycle, one of the world's longest running negative rate regimes, and it has no plans of stopping anytime soon because of its massive debt to GDP ratio. Many experts believe this will be the fate of the United States in no distant future. Former hedge fund manager James Lavish describes the situation perfectly in some of his recent tweets. One tweet reads, the US Treasury admits that the debt situation is unsustainable, even publishing it in a graph. The problem is their graph, black line, is optimistic. The reality is that the problem likely soon goes parabolic, red line. It's just math. In another tweet, Lavish outlines three ways the United States can lower its debt. The tweet reads, Remember, there are three ways the U.S. can lower its debt. One, austerity. Lower spending to create surpluses, which is equal to political suicide. Two, raising taxes, which is likely political suicide that eventually leads to lower productivity anyway. Three, allowing for higher structural inflation, higher nominal GDP, leads to higher taxes and lower deficits. Lavish notes that the third option is the easiest and most viable option from a political standpoint, but even that might not be sustainable for much longer. In another tweet, he points out that foreign demand for U.S. treasuries is waning rapidly. Let's get back to Yusko's interview as he further discusses the situation and the urgent need for Bitcoin for everyone that wishes to avoid the eventual collapse. All central banks are facing the same problem. And it's a problem of their own creation. And it's, I will argue, an intentional act, not an unintentional act, because governments, as they consolidate power, spend. Why do they do that? Well, because it's profitable for them and their cronies. And, you know, I, I was amazed. I actually was amazed by this, that I think it was Mitch McConnell actually said on television don't worry about all this money that's going to Ukraine. It's, it's not going to, to the Ukrainians. It's going to us. It's going to our companies to you know buy bullets and bombs and stuff. So, wow, he just admitted that it's just graft and corruption. So that proclivity to spend isn't going away. But here's the, here's the little problem, and, and, and Lynn Alden pointed this out, and I don't know if, if she sourced it or if she took it from someone else, it doesn't really matter, but, but she, she's the one that I'm stealing it from. Uh, U.S. tax receipts just plunged to the lowest level ever. Now, not in dollars, but in, in rate of change. And that is bad, right? Because if you're spending too much and you're not bringing in enough revenue, what happens? Well, what Fitch says, in theory, you, you could default. Now, they're not going to default because that would 
be disastrous if the global risk-free asset suddenly had risk. But um, I think it, it means a lot of things for global currencies, I think are going to continue to weaken. Therefore, it actually has implications for Bitcoin, which remember, Bitcoin doesn't change. One Bitcoin is one Bitcoin. It's just the price that we price it in changes, the, the asset that we price it in changes. And those are all, I think, going to get worse. In her July newsletter, renowned macro analyst Lynn Alden draws some comparisons between the current economic situation in Japan and the direction the U.S. economy is heading towards. According to Alden, the United States may be about to follow the example of Japan, which is currently in such a precarious situation that interest rate hikes are no longer an effective tool for fighting inflation. But Japan's spiral started much earlier during a rapid globalization trend that helped lower some of the effects. Alden reckons the U.S. will have a more difficult time because of the following factors. Number 1. Japan aged ahead of everyone else during a period when China ramped up its production and supplied everyone with inexpensive goods helping to overcome labor shortages. Number two, Japan spends less than half of what the United States does on healthcare per capita, despite having a median age that is 10 years older. Alden adds that when the U.S. is the same age average age as Japan, we may have three times the per capita healthcare cost as Japan. Number three, not only does the U.S. spend more of its GDP on its military, 3 to 4 percent compared to Japan's 1 percent, but its reckoning is coming at a time when geopolitical conflicts are heating up compared to the 1990s to 2010s unipolar period. This is why Alden, like Yusko and Lavish, advocates owning hard assets like Bitcoin, which she describes as the ideal asset to get you through whatever storm the United States is heading into. For how much longer do you think the United States can continue to sustain its massive debts before it completely crumbles under the $200 trillion weight? Please share your thoughts, comments, and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.